All right, hey guys, what's going on? Side Home Theater dude, got a brand new episode for today. Today's video is a little special. Um, we're moving, so this is the last time that this entire system is gonna be together. I'm tearing it down, I gotta put everything in boxes, and then uh, we gotta move out to our new space. So I figured before I do that, might as well give you guys a quick farewell tour, and then just show you guys, you know, the, the components that I picked, the reasons why I did it, and you know, some of the costs associated with it. And I'm going to go ahead and jump into that. I'll show you guys some demos at the end too. So time stamps are going to be in the description. So if you guys want to fast forward, you guys are more than welcome to do that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into everything right after the intro. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and take a look around. This is the final product of the um, That Home Theater Dude efforts. This is the home theater that I've built in my space for, um, I guess the last two years, this is the culmination of, you know, all that hard work. So now again, these videos aren't meant to be like bragging of it or anything. Like, like, I don't care about showing you guys my crap. It's just, uh, kind of like, a a good idea of what it was, what it takes to put something like this together and how much things cost. And I mean, obviously I like these components enough to own them in my personal theater. So that kind of speaks to the testament of their performance as well. So I'm not a paid actor. I don't get any of this stuff for free. It's not like, you know, people are just handing me crap to, uh, to review. Like I, I spend my hard earned money on this stuff as well. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's still just the same as you guys going out and buying this stuff. But, um, this is just showing you guys what I've done in my space. So, um, let's go ahead and start talking about the whole journey. So, um, speakers are the most important thing of a home theater. I, I think so. Um, some people are more of the visual. I am more of a, a sound purist. So I chose to go with a full on 9.2.6 Dolby Atmos um, SVS Ultra system. So now this is the Ultra lineup pretty much on the horizontal. So I have, um, let's go ahead and just start at the front. I have Ultra Towers up front. I have the Ultra Center. And then I have the Prime Pinnacles as the front wides. Again, uh, this isn't an ideal setup. This is my living room. Obviously you can see the, the front door right there. Um, you know, this is just what it is. I don't have a dedicated space yet. Next house does. So, I mean, this stuff will be less cramped in there, but I mean, <laughs> I've, I've, I've seen the comments. You guys like to crap on me for, you know, putting all these speakers in this space. You guys aren't here. You guys don't listen to it. And, uh, overall the recreation of sound is very realistic and very impressive. So prime pinnacles for the front wides. Next, we're going to have the ultra surrounds for, you know, the surrounds. And these are really cool. Um, I was kind of hesitant to use these for my surrounds because they do say in the Dolby Atmos manual to not use these type of speakers. But I think that was more of a misnomer because uh, I think that what they were talking about is not using them as your overheads or your heights. Um, I mean, maybe I'm still m misreading it. Maybe I'm not, but uh, that's what I got from the manual and that's why I decided to go with those. In, um, in working with these and actually like living with them for the last two years, I think that the sound recreation is very realistic and uh, there's been several times where I've just been, you know, just hanging out right here or, you know, just, just hanging out uh, wherever it may be. And I'm thinking there may be like someone in the house or something or like, you know, something that's just so realistic. And it's, it's because of that guy right there. So very, very great speaker. Highly recommend that you guys check those out as well. In the back, we have our Ultra Towers, and this is unconventional for the, to say the least. These were done for a specific reason because, let me just go ahead and pan around to the front. I mean, no, I, don't, I know you guys don't like whenever I do that, but I have these big, crazy subwoofers up front, dual PB16 Ultras. Um, obviously, this isn't made best for aesthetics. Um, well, this is ba basically made for aesthetics. Obviously, I would like to have this one there and then this one right back here in this corner. Um, where the <laughs> vacuum cleaner is, but since I don't have them in ideal positions, this basically helps out with uh, with that base management because it has you know dual subwoofers in the bottom, and then it basically helps even out the entire response through the space. So um, another thing I wanted to let you guys know about is that this space was never meant to be permanent. Obviously, you'll see wires, you know, full transparency. Um, I knew that, th that this wasn't going to be um, a, a permanent solution. This is an exterior wall. This is an exterior wall. And if you guys have ever ran wires um, through exterior walls, um, it, it, it really just didn't make sense for me to do it. So you guys will see, you know, wires throughout my videos. And there was a specific reason because I knew I was moving. I bought this house, um, you know, whenever I started my doctorate because I figured why waste money on rent why, rather than I can sit there and make some equity in a house. 
So we bought this house and then that was the main reason why I didn't want to go, you know, crazy with all, all this stuff. So ultra towers in the back. The, um, these are actually really, really good as rear surrounds. It may be counterintuitive to put these back there, but I mean, I really, really like the way that the overall representation of sound was whenever I put those in. And now overhead, we have the prime elevations. We have six of them. So back there are the only ones that aren't piano black, but those were the first ones that I got. I got those as a giveaway at SVS at one of those events. So highly recommend that you guys go to these events that SVS holds because I mean, you're, you're, chances are you're probably going to walk away with something. And that's the only thing that they've ever given me. Everything else I've had to buy. <laughs> so don't think that these guys are just giving this stuff away, you know, to us YouTube reviewers. It, it's just not the way that they do business. And uh, it, it doesn't make sense for companies just to give stuff away. Um, so here we have the um, prime elevation and this is being hung from the ceiling. If you guys didn't know that these come with magnetic mounts, if you ask for them, and you can actually just hang them from the ceiling like that. If you don't ask for the magnetic mounts, you basically just hang them on the wall, facing up, facing down, whatever you want to do. You can use them as surrounds, which I've you know just done that at a subscriber's house. Um, you know, sold him some of those, and then he used them as his surrounds, and he's also using them as his Atmos as well. Um, or you can use them as a front channel, whatever it is. But I mean, those are really really cool speakers, and I think that they're kind of slept on because not a lot of people know about them. Most people just drill into the ceiling. And that's another reason why I didn't drill into the ceiling and put a, a speaker up there is because the, my son's room is right up here. And uh, whenever I started this build, I knew that, you know, putting in a, a, a more or less permanent speaker wouldn't necessarily help my specific, uh, you know, operation. And I wouldn't necessarily uh, like to go ahead and install that. So I didn't, but now these are box speakers and I am a big proponent of, you know, enclosed speakers, because even if you have an in-wall or an in-ceiling, most of the times they don't have a back to them. And usually if they do have a back to them, they cost more. And uh, if you don't have a back, they may reverberate around in that space. So this is about, you know, eight inches of nothing. And then, you know, you get to, you get to the next room. So it can, you know, the waves can just bounce around in there. And then you're losing some of your, you know, sound into that space rather than coming down into the room itself. So that was a, re a main reason why I decided to go with uh, the choices that I did. Obviously we talked about the big boys before. PB16 Ultras, these things are nuts. Um, the people that I've brought over the house, uh, whether it be friends, family, uh, <laughs> random subscribers that ask, uh, you know, there's nowhere to, to listen to these things at, man. And um, I, you know, like a fool, I go ahead and open up my house to complete strangers um, to some of these people, but they turned out not to be creeps. So that was really cool. Um, but yeah, these things are awesome. Highly recommend that you guys, you know, don't skimp on bass. Don't skimp on your left, center, and right channel and uh, don't skimp on a projection system if you guys are gonna go with that as well. Um, there's a lot of compromises. Not, you know, not everyone buys all this stuff all at once and not everyone has the pocket to buy all this stuff at once. So, I mean, you can, you can build your thing over, uh, you can build your system over time, like just like I did. And I'm no different than you guys. I spent my hard earned money on this stuff just like you. So the only advantage is that I get to get my hands on a lot more gear than you guys do. So I get to, you know, give you guys my spin on it versus you going out and wasting your money on something that may or may not fit your needs. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk about my rack. So right here we have the Xbox one X. We have the Arkham P 1000. This is a seven channel amplifier, 135 Watts. I basically use that as my, um, overhead, um, Atmos type of amplifier. We have the Eero mesh Wi-Fi network. We have the Logitech hub for the Harmony elite. 4K Apple TV. I have an 18 RU rack, and this is always buy more rack than you think you're going to need because this is 18 and this doesn't come close to, you know, being able to use all of the things that I have with proper spacing. Um, so, I mean, always buy more rack than you think you're going to need. This one's completely out of the box, 100%. So, um, my next rack is going to be, you know, very large and uh, there's going to be enough space in there because you don't want to, you know, butt all these things up together like I did like this. This is not ideal. You want these electronics to breathe. So speaking of electronics breathing, we have the AC Infinity. I think this is the T8. And this is basically used to help, you know, cool down the, you know, brains of the operation, which is the RMC1. This is Emotiva's flagship preamp processor, 16 channels, man. This thing is nasty. I've basically, you know, done, you know, an A-B test in between this one and the very popular Marantz 8805, 
You guys know I love Denim and Morant's, man, but this one came out on top 100%. And the cool thing with this is that since the last time I did the review, just right after that, they came out with a brand new, um, uh, completely new software for this specific unit. So all those bugs, all that crashing, all the problems, all the headache, all the crap that you guys were slinging at this processor, it's 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 not an issue anymore. The, they basically fixed all those in uh, the last round of, of updates, and I highly recommend that you guys check this thing out if you guys have the funds for it. Um, easily one of my favorites. If you guys can't afford this one, they have the RMC1L and the XMC2. And then a lot of those are basically um, able to um, meet your needs. Besides that, I have the Panasonic UB9000 down here. Easily my favorite 4K Blu-ray player on the market right now. I mean, I wish I would have got an OPPO whenever they first came out, but sadly I didn't. Now, if you buy a used one, it's like 2000 bucks. So <laughs> it's, kind of a, it's kind of a mixed bag. But this one is great if you don't need the SACD things like most people swear that they need, which you'll probably never use it anyway. Um, this one does 90% uh, of the job of the OPPO, except for the SACD. It has incredible picture, incredible sound. Highly recommend that one, and it's paired perfectly for my new JVC. Down here, you guys know I always love um, to talk about power conditioning. Personally, in my, in my house, I have several. This is the Panamax that basically runs this whole stack. And this is the 5300. I have a 5400 that will be going in the new rack as well. But always protect your gear, guys. It makes no sense to spend all this money and all this stuff in your system. And then, you know, just plugging it all in the wall and, you know, lightning strike comes through and destroys it or, you know, whatever it is. A lot of the time, these come with warranties included whenever you buy them. So it protects all of your gear anyway. So peace of mind, highly recommend you guys do it. I don't care if people say that it robs power from your system. I would rather be safe and not have to buy all this crap all over again. Besides that, I have the... I love these things. These are the Parasound amplifiers down there. I have two different ones. I'm probably going to be buying another one for the next house. But uh, they, they basically sent me these over to review, and uh, I'm going to buy these. I still haven't bought them yet. It's basically been a really long time review. Um, but I'm, I'm buying these, and I'm buying an additional one. So this is the um, Parasound A52+. Plus. This one's 180 watts of channel by 5. And I decided to, you know, review this one and this one. Uh, because they're very close and perform well, they're, they're very close in you know what you get. But this one is 180 watts of channel, and this one's the A51, and that one's 250 watts of channel. So I use this as my front wides and my um, surrounds, and then I use this as my left, center, and right, and my rear surrounds. So this is 250 watts of channel down there from the A51. Amazing sound recreation. Highly recommend that you guys check out Parasound if you guys can afford it. It goes great with this Emotiva. Um, preamp processor. And if you guys even just want to use it as separates, I mean, they're going to be great for you anyway. So um, highly recommend you guys check those out. So that finishes off the rack. So now I, now we're going to go in and talk about the projection system. So obviously, if you're going to go with a projection system, it's a two-piece scenario. So if you buy a nice projector, you have to pair it with a nice screen. And I think a, a good rule of thumb, I've been using this pretty recently, is um, however much you're going to spend on your projector, Think about spending roughly half of that on your screen. A lot of people can just throw paint on a wall, but uh, let's go ahead and just show you the walls real quick. Here's the downfall. You get these little jaggies and stuff like this on this knockdown type of drywall. So if you want to paint your wall and put that on there, it's going to look goofy. Uh, <laughs> and you spend like, you know, thousands of dollars on our projector. It doesn't make sense to, you know, use that stuff. Um, like you can go to Home Depot and get it or whatever. Um, highly recommend that you guys, you know, invest in a really nice screen. I specifically had to for this specific reason right here, this window. It's the bane of my existence. And this stupid light right here ruins my um, movie time, movie experience. So this is a black diamond screen from SI Screens. 144 inches from that corner down to here. And obviously, you know, the reciprocal on the other side. But 144 inches, 12 foot of screen. This is a 2.35 to 1 ultra wide screen. It's not a 16 by nine, which you guys will probably be very familiar with. If you're watching like a TV or even your cell phone turned sideways, that's 16 by nine. So this is a 2.35 ultra wide. And if you have a projector that is capable of doing 2.35, then you won't have black bars whenever you watch movies. That was the main reason why I wanted to go with this one because I can't stand whenever I'm watching a TV and there's black bars at the top and bottom. Um, I just, whenever it's movie time, I want it to be movie time. So that was the main reason why I got this one. And uh, this is a 1.4 gain. 
it uh, amplifies the light that it, uh, whenever it hits and it rejects light from all other areas besides anything that's coming from the projection itself. So anything that's coming from the top, it rejects it. Anything coming from the side, it rejects it. A couple things that people don't tell you about these is that uh, if you don't have the proper throw distance, so the bottom edge, this is 132 inches, you have to be a minimum of 100 or 1 1.5 times that distance from the screen to the actual lens of your system. So that makes sense. So um, if, if you don't, uh, you might run into some hot spotting that people kind of complain about on ambient light rejecting screens. But uh, if you set it up properly, you don't have to worry about that at all. And then obviously I have the backlit LED kit on there. I still haven't set up the Philips uh, hub or Hue hub. I think that's gonna be coming at the next house. So, you know, stay tuned for that video coming up shortly. Back here, I'm gonna whip around in the back of the room. We have the brand new JVC RS3000. I, I, <laughs> I love this projector. It gives you an incredible image. The overall performance of this thing is just nuts. I mean, it, it 100 millimeter glass, all glass lens, uh, native 4K, uh, full on um, 18 gigabit 4x4x4 color space. I mean, it gives you all the juice in this projector and it is, it is an amazing, amazing image. So highly recommend that you guys check this one out. I mean, obviously it's a little more of a premium type of feature. I don't expect everyone to run out and grab one of these, um, but I mean, it's, it's an incredible image and I highly recommend this if you guys are going, you know, anything above like 160 on your screen size. Um, Cause the downfall between the NX5 and 7 and the RS1000 and 2000 is that with their 65 millimeter lens right there in the middle, they don't necessarily go past 200 inches. So if you absolutely have to go that big, this is the one to go with, or maybe even the JVC 4500. I paired that with their um, strong fine adjust mount, and that works perfectly with a zero edge screen. So obviously this is zero edge right here, and it's critical to have those micro adjustments to make the screen actually fit, or the image actually fit the screen. So that's that. So I talked about, you know, the speakers. I showed you guys my rack. I showed you guys the projection system. Besides that, it's all in the details. It's all the accessories. So like I was talking about, you know, that little, that little uh, mount right there, we, we have cables. I run fiber 4K HDMI cables. I use Ruby Pro and Monoprice. Both of those have been incredible. I also have some fiber, um, fiber um, 8K cables from Ruby Pro as well. Still need to review those for those guys but uh, that's gonna be coming at the next house. Besides that, you guys really like this, this little shelf. I get so many questions about this little shelf. It's a floating shelf that a company here in Dallas did. They're called Trailhead DFW, and it's just a little shelf that just floats. They, they custom build these things. So they don't really have a factory for them. Uh, it's just two guys that, that come out and install it and really, really cool. It's been sturdy. This is you know a pretty heavy speaker, and for it to be that far out and then not fall down, it has to be really, really strong. So. Highly recommend that you guys check those guys out. Um, they are an incredible value um, for this job. And uh, I just wanted to give them a shout out real quick. Besides that, I mean, um, I'm gonna go ahead and start talking about prices. And uh, like I was talking about earlier, this wasn't meant to be, you know, bragging like, hey man, this is how much money I spent on all this stuff. If you guys have followed the channel for a while, you guys realize that's not my intent. It's usually the people that leave the comments that are, oh, well, he's just sitting there bragging. It's the people that, you know, watch one video and they think they know everything about my channel. So, I mean, a lot of you guys, you know, they, you watch week after week, you realize my character and you guys know that that's not what I'm trying to do. So, all right, guys, so let's go ahead and talk about prices of this stuff. Um, uh, pretty much everything you see speaker wise, except for this mono price, uh, 215 subwoofer back there. It's not even hooked up. I got to jump. I got to drop that one in the mail before we leave. But uh, just talking about the speakers in this place with the 9.2.6 um, Atmos system, very not typical. You guys will probably spend a lot less. Um, but just what to expect in uh, this this specific configuration, it is thirteen thousand five hundred for that nine dot two dot six. So nine speakers on the horizontal, two subwoofers, and then six speakers overhead. So that's basically what to expect there. On projection system, let's talk about the projection system with the screen and the projector itself. So that uh, massive. Uh, 4K, native 4K e-shift projector over there. We're talking about a grand total of 24,000. And then on the rack, everything over here, we're talking about um, 14,850. 
Okay, so last thing I want to talk about is like the accessories. So now uh, we have the floating shelf up here. This one was made from Trailhead DFW. They're a local company out here in Dallas. I think that they actually can, you know, ship these things out to you as well. They custom build these things to your specifications. So I told them that I wanted, you know, something that big enough to hold this speaker and heavy enough or sturdy enough for it not to fall down. So, I mean, if you guys don't know, this thing is pretty hefty and for it to be that far out and then that be on right on the edge, this thing has to be really, really sturdy and it's, you know, held its purpose. It's not, you know, <laughs> dilapidated or deformed. So those guys definitely know what they're doing. Highly recommend you guys check them out. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a, leave a link down in the description, you know, basically just to give those guys a little bit of a, a little bit of a shout out. But besides that, we have the um, sound treatments on the wall. If you guys haven't done sound treatments, highly recommend, you know, this is extreme. This is like uh, Armageddon from 1997, you know, whenever they're on the moon or whatever. It's not typical to, you know, use something like this, but I mean, it serves its purpose. These definitely helped out. I noticed a huge difference. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it right up here and then you guys can check it out. But biggest difference besides buying a brand new set of speakers, it really, you know, it really helps define your room rather than having, you know, kind of confusing audio with, you know, sounds going left and right. And then your surround sounds, you know, whenever it's supposed to be on the left side, you hear it on the right side, you know, a second later, a millisecond later, it, it just confuses your brain. So highly recommend you guys get some sound treatments. You guys don't have to get these, but these are from Sound Assured. Big shout out to those guys. They actually just donated this entire kit um, to the channel. So these definitely helped out and I really, really enjoy them. They have bass traps too. So if you want those as well, and then you can use them. Um, you don't necessarily have to use these on the ceiling. There are more appealing options. Like I did a couple of DIY ones whenever I first started the channel. And these uh, these worked out pretty well. All you do is just get a little lumber, you know, cut to size, put some treatment in there, and then wrap it in an acoustically transparent fabric. Not canvas. Don't use canvas on that because canvas will just bounce sound right off, right, right off of it and completely negate the point of even getting sound treatments in the first place. So besides that, I mean, it's all in the little details. It's uh, the, the little things that basically add up <laughs> that you don't really expect to, like the mount to per, for the projector, the uh, speaker cables, the speaker wiring, you know, all that stuff. Dedicated 20 amp circuit that I got from, I don't even remember who, but those guys were pretty highly rated here in Dallas. Uh, I use a 100% 20 amp circuit for this dedicated stack over here. And you know, your lights don't dim and you don't have to worry about burning your house down or, you know, tripping breakers or whatever. But, uh, but yeah, so that's basically the stuff I use. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give you guys some quick uh, prices, and then we're gonna go ahead and jump on those demos. Okay, so just talking about the speakers themselves and nothing else. So, you know, all the, all the SVS speakers besides that monoprice one in the back, all of those are gonna be for a 9.2.6. Uh, th this system retails for 13,500. And now if you're gonna talk about the projection system, this is a black diamond screen paired with that uh, crazy, amazing uh, JVC projector back there. Um, the retail on both of those are gonna be 24,000. Now, if you're gonna talk about all the rest of the stuff, like the accessories in the room, uh, you know, the mount right here, the speaker wires, cabling, you know, uh, HDMI cables, all the other stuff. Now you're talking about a pretty modest sum of 2650. And then everything in this rack over here um, this stack right over here, we're talking for 14,850. So if you guys are at, at home counting along, that is a total of $55,000 in this house spent over the last, you know, several years. So, I mean, I've, I've basically been piecing this thing together. I don't recommend, you know, just going out and buying all this stuff at once. And, you know, I probably don't recommend that you guys put the stuff in your living room, like right up front so people can see it and everything. Uh, but I mean, you're going to do what you're going to do. I mean, this is just basically a guide to show, to show you guys how much I spent and you know what to expect realistically, if you want something like this for yourselves. I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm actually blessed to be in the business. None of these people give me any of this stuff to, you know, just to have for keeps. I have to spend my hard money on hard earned money on this stuff, just like you guys. So, uh, the, the Testament is, is that I believe in it so much that I have it in my personal space. So Highly recommend that you guys check out this stuff. If you guys want links to any of it, I'll go ahead and leave a, a company down in the description. You guys can get a hold of them and then you guys can go ahead and build your system, you know, any way you see fit. So let's go ahead and jump into some of those demos like I've been talking about. Each of us in our own way was broken. It was hard to know who was more crazy. Me or everyone else. I tell myself. 
haunted by those I could not protect. So I exist in this wasteland. A man reduced to a single instinct. Survive.
What a class A griever. <laughs> it's not something I would ever say about myself. <laughs> I live for the simple things. Like how much this is gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah, right, little man. guys that's gonna wrap up my uh, 2020 home theater tour hope you guys enjoyed it um, this whole process has just been an amazing experience you know from building the system to you know st to starting the channel to interacting with you guys to networking with people in the business it's it's, it's just been something that's just been really cool for me um, and I hope you that you guys learned something along the way but besides that we're gonna go ahead and tear this system down I'm gonna move into my new space we're gonna go ahead and build that one up Got a lot of new different things to show you guys that I'm just really excited about. I think you guys are going to enjoy it as well. But as always, if you guys want to buy into this stuff, I'm going to go ahead and leave links down in the description. You guys can go ahead and, uh, you know, call up my buddies too over at Dream Media. They can definitely help you out as well. Well, all right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. So like, favorite, share, subscribe, and stick around to the channel. I got the new theater coming very shortly. Can't wait to show it off to you guys. I've been working on it very hard over the last couple weeks. So that's it. Catch you next time.